start with the uh, key messages uh, for the Philippines uh, economic uh, outlook. Strong economic growth in 2016 is projected to carry on in 2017 and 2018. Thanks to continued acceleration of investment and robust consumption. I think the story here is a strong uh, investment uh, for public uh, construction and private investment outpacing uh, the growth in uh, uh, consumption expenditures. For 2017, the Philippine economy is expected to moderate, uh, a growth, growing at a moderate pace from last year, based on these, uh, the following factors. Uh, this year's growth is coming from a high base, and there are headwinds to the macroeconomic headwinds. First, rising inflation due to global oil prices, tempering consumer sentiment, and ultimately consumption. Second, external risk from the U.S. interest rates hike and uncertain trade and investment policies in industrialized economies. The Philippines' impressive economic performance provides the country an exceptional opportunity to further reduce poverty and foster a more equal sharing of prosperity. Note that in the last five years, the poverty reduction has been strong, especially uh, strong, uh, I may point out, in provinces which has gained more than double-digit growth. I mean, uh, examples are Aklan, Davao Oriental, Surigao del Norte, Tawi-Tawi, and Sambuanga Sibugay. The 10-point socioeconomic agenda and the PDP 2017-2022 has made inclusive growth the medium-term goal. Key to achieve this goal is effective implementation under the government's development plan. Let us now look at past, uh, past year's performance. Broad-based domestic demand underpinned last year's strong growth of 6.8%. Investment, both public and private, made the biggest contribution to growth, followed by private consumption. The ratio of fixed investment to GDP reached 23.8% in 2016, its highest in over a decade. I think that's important to emphasize. Those still behind the ratio in other Southeast Asian economies. Private consumption provided nearly 70% of GDP, benefited from higher employment, mainly in services and construction, and steady inflows of remittances from workers overseas. Government spending also remained strong, including in expenditure in social services, such as in education, health, and the program conditional cash transfers. Net external demand, however, was a drag to growth as merchandise exports were sluggish while imports were brisk on the back of strong domestic demand. By sector, services and industry were the key growth drivers. Services, as we know, the largest sector, providing over half of GDP and employment, generated nearly two-thirds of GDP growth last year. Subsectors posting strong growth were retail trade, business process outsourcing, tourism, real estate, and financial services. Industry growth was largely driven by manufacturing. Construction, both public and private, also contributed significantly to industry growth. The drought caused by El Nino cut agriculture output by 1.3% during the year, although there was a slight recovery in the second half of last year. Moving on to growth outlook for 2017 and 2018, GDP growth is projected to remain strong. It has been strong for the last five years already. Uh, but uh, relative to 2016, moving at a moderate pace of 6.4 uh, this year. Reflecting in part the high base effect from last year's figure, but also rising commodity prices that could affect uh, ultimately domestic demand. Growth is expected to recover to 6.6 .6 in 2018 because government plans to further ramp up public investment and infrastructure as well as second round effects of fiscal spending 
in 2017. Fiscal policy will remain supportive to growth. The government has raised the ceiling on fiscal deficit from 2% of GDP to 3%, mainly to accommodate higher development spending. The 2017 national budget plans a 12% increase in spending with significantly increased outlays for infrastructure and social programs. Again, uh, the key drivers that we are seeing in 2016, uh, the same theme moving forward. Rising international prices for oil should nudge domestic infl inflation up to 3.5 this year and 3.7 next year. The forecast, however, remains within the central bank's target of the band of 2 to 4 percent. <clears throat> On external risk, while the Philippines is expected to continue to do well internally, there are external risks that could weigh on growth prospects. The first, positive economic data in the U.S. and an increment of the U.S. interest rates in December 2016 signify an upward trend in interest rates in the U.S. as well as other major industrialized economies. As the global interest rate goes up, there are risks of substantial capital flow reversals in the region including the Philippines. Financial market volatility, the weakening of the peso, and the possible hikes in the BSP's policy rate could temper domestic consumption and investment. Second, a slow recovery in major industrial economies such as in Japan, EU, uh, among the Philippines' major export markets and key sources of foreign direct investment could weigh on growth. Lastly, Possible trade and investment protectionism by industrial economies could also impact FDI, BPO revenues, and remittances. However, despite the risks that we have outlined, vulnerability to, exter to external shocks are cushioned by the country's improved macroeconomic fundamentals. As we all know, this is always the consistent theme in the past five years the uh, macroeconomic uh, fundamentals has been pretty solid. National government debt is less than 45% of GDP, the lowest in over a decade. Debt is, is largely denominated in lo local currency, accounting for about two-thirds. A continuing decline in external debt from the equivalent of 59.7, about 60% of GDP in 2005, to 24.6 in 2016 has helped strengthen the country's external payments position. Finally, this is my last slide. Moving on to the development challenge, there's improved macroeconomic fundamentals, resumption of strong growth since 2010, and the administration's emphasis on regional development provides a foundation for the country to further reduce poverty and foster a more, more equal sharing of prosperity. Note that in the Philippine Development Plan, uh, the new one, uh, 2017 to 2022, there is a chapter, a very strong emphasis on spatial development. You know, growth for the regions, emphasis on uh, more investment and infrastructure for the regions. That's a very significant uh, articulation of uh, the need to improve the regions of the country. Another development challenge is the uh, inequality. The Gini coefficient, a measure of income inequality, has improved in recent years. Uh, less inequality, uh, uh, the figure shows less inequality. But this figure is, remains high among Southeast Asian uh, neighbors. National poverty rate fell from 25% 25.2 of the population in 2012 to 21.6 in 2015. A rapid reduction, although ele remains elevated in some regions. As you could see from the chart, uh, ARMM and Eastern Visayas are the two regions that uh, have the highest uh, <coughs> poverty uh, incidence. Recognizing these, the 10-point socioeconomic agenda aims to intensify efforts 
to sustain strong growth at the same time ensure that the benefits of growth are shared more across the population. Addressing this challenge requires concerted efforts to bring about more equitable access to services such as sanitation, safe drinking water, health care, and education. Building on the 10-point socioeconomic agenda of the Duterte administration and the Philippines Development Plan for 2017 to 2022, uh, lays out government strategies to promote more inclusive growth and development. The plan aims to bring down the poverty rate from 21.6 in 2015 to 14% by 2022, specifically targeting poverty in lagging regions. The key, therefore, is to, make, is to making growth inclusive is effective implementation of the strategies and programs under the government's PDP and, of course, the 10-point socioeconomic agenda of the Duterte administration. Uh, I stop there.